dominating the first half with 15 first downs to Hawaii's four. And look at Pittsburgh's balance with 135 yards on the ground and 150 through the air. On the other hand, you have Hawaii with 110 yards rushing, but no passing yards. And also the possession time, Pittsburgh has had the ball two times more than Hawaii has had it. That's an amazing statistic. Well, that's, uh, that's total domination. 135 yards rushing to 110. 150 yards passing. That's uh, all Alex Van Pelt. He is 12 for 16. And the Rainbows, nothing. I mean, nothing. There's a salute to, to uh, the seniors and also to us. Yeah, beautiful sign. Nice artwork. Your, your cousin, right? That's your cousin. <laughs> So the second half upon us now. It has rained off and on throughout the first uh, half and probably will continue to do so. And a, and a blustery wind here, something that we have not seen uh, for the schedule of games here on uh, the Aloha Stadium turf this season. The Rainbows are undefeated at home, by the way. They have been able to win every game since the final game last year when they lost to Notre Dame. Pitt trying to end that string tonight as well. Rainbows are 6-0 and oh on this field as we begin the second half. Sean Conley will kick off for Pitt. Deep for the Rainbows, Matthew Harding and Derek Branch. Pittsburgh has been kicking off to Harding. Branch already with a 56-yard punt return in this game. I'd like to remind you, a player from each team will be honored at the end of the game for going beyond the call. GTE Hawaiian Tell will make a contribution for scholarships to the University of Hawaii. Conley kicks off. This time it will go to Branch. They switched. Branch two yards deep in the end zone. He'll return it. Not a good decision. Not a good decision. It took him time. Well, Jim, I think Derek Branch felt that he caught the ball inside of the field, inside the, uh, with inside the goal line, and then stepped back into the end zone. So I think that he he had to bring the ball out. So some confusion there for Derek Branch. Well, the Rainbows are pinned back now inside their 15-yard line. It will be first and ten from their own 13. Michael Carter will come out as uh, the quarterback. So Jim, Pittsburgh has dominated the statistics, but really the score is still close, 20 to 14. Derek Branch is to the left, and Marlo Lewis to the right. Jasper and Kealoha on the wing. Ball is kept by Carter. Carter breaks one tackle, gets out to the 15, very short gain on the play. And another excellent job by Charles Williams, the linebacker, number 53. Well, Charles Williams is assigned to get the quarterback. He's switching off assignments with the defensive ends. That time I'm surprised that they allowed Carter to go upfield because really I thought he downed the ball. He put the ball right onto the ground. Well, they give him forward progress to the 16-yard line. Second down, about eight for the Rainbow. Ball is kept by Carter again, and he is swallowed up after a very short game. Pittsburgh has defense this option as well as any team the Rainbows have played this year so far in this game. And you'll see that the defensive ends again crashing down on Carter. And then again, number 53, Charles Williams showing up. You know, Charles Williams played at UCLA. They would call him a Buffalo linebacker. <laughs> He's a big man. So a big third down play early on in the second half. Third and five for the Rainbows at their own 19-yard line. Carter with a quick pitch to Sims. Sims to the 23, perhaps the first down. It depends on the mark. Well, he definitely crossed the first down marker. And then he went backwards. And I think they'll give him the initial mark. And they do. A nice two-way option there to the left side. Uh, seeing Travis Sims, instead of being a dive man, he becomes the pitch man. He gets a nice play and gets the first down for the Rainbows. Sims with 46 yards in the first half. In rushing. Ball just short of the 24, first and 10 for the Bows. Ball is 
pitch to the near side. Turning it is John Veneri. Gerald Simpson tracks him down as Veneri crosses the 30-yard line. Veneri from Kamehameha. Again, John Veneri is just a solid backup, doing really well when he gets his opportunities to play. He makes the best of it, and that time getting a nice gain on the pitch. The end of the play, close to nine yards, second down about a yard and a half. You know, Pittsburgh's defense has not done well against option teams this year, against West Virginia, Syracuse, and Notre Dame. And really, those teams do not run a true triple option, so that extra week to prepare for a Y has really paid off. Ball is kept by Carter, and they diagnose him for a loss. And really, you can credit the defense, but Hawaii's offensive front is just not doing a consistent job of, of staying with their men up front. Mike Halepin, number 94 from Apollo, Pennsylvania, there to make the tackle for the Panthers. Third down and two, no gain on that last play. Ball at the 31. Enough for the first down. Okay, Aloha out to, to the 35 yard line. That was just a nice play by Michael Carter. I mean, really, if you're the defensive player and you've, you've got Carter, you don't know where he's, what he's going to do, whether he's going to pitch the ball, take it himself, finally he decides to pitch the ball. I mean, he almost picked out our own count. Yeah, Gerald Simpson looking at him. First down from their own 35 now for the Rainbows. Running this triple option. Ball is given to Sims. And Sims able to muscle to the 39. Gain on, on the play of a solid three to four yards. And Jim, Hawaii is, does not have any yards in their passing game statistics. And, and Hawaii has not been known for their passing game. But what the passing game does uh, is, is really uh, take advantage of teams, of defensive teams that overplay the option. And Hawaii has not been able to capitalize that on tonight. We saw the green circle with the K in the circle on the helmet. That's for the uh, victims of Hurricane Miki on the island of Kauai. Ball is back to Sims. And Sims is upended about a yard short of the first down. Alexius Perkins flying up from the secondary. Jim, the teammates, all the Hawaii team wanted to put a G on their helmets this week. And they're really dedicating this game to a, uh, a, 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 a facilities operator or janitor. Big George. That, yeah, Big George who passed away this week. And really, George is, is just a great man and, and a lot, he's got a lot of respect for, for these players. Third down and two. Ball again kept by Carter. Pitches back to Miller at midfield. Cuts it outside. He's at the 40. And his horse collar down at the 36-yard line. The fifth. Again, that option game, sometimes it's slow to get starting, but once it gets starting, boy, it's hard to defend. And here you see the triple option going to the left side, a nice fake to Travis Sims. That makes the defense collapse on him and opens up the outside for Veneri. 21-yard gain by John Veneri. First down at the 36-yard line of Pitt. And he's thrown for a loss back at the 41-yard line. Well, there's just too much penetration by Pittsburgh's defense. Gerald Simpson that time just ran right over Doug Violetti. I mean, on the top of your screen, you just see the defensive players of Pittsburgh just come crashing in and really force Michael Carter to make quick decisions on the option. Well, I stand corrected. Violetti was on uh, the pulling guard that time. John Abenay credited with the start. Second down, long yardage. Carter pitches back. Kealoha, 35. Kealoha to the 29. That brings up a big third down play now for the Wrangler. Pittsburgh leads 20 to 14. Jason Chavis from McKeesport, Pennsylvania. A freshman, 6'2", 223 pounds, makes the stop. Of course, at this point in the season, no one is a freshman anymore. Well, and again, you, know, you can credit Eddie Kealoha coming around for the pitch, but 
The guy that does a steady job of blocking is John Veneri. Does a nice job of cut blocking the strong safety. Third down and three. Analyzing at the line, Carter. Carter keeps, pitches back to Veneri. Can he get the first down? I believe he's short. Well, do we see Elam or do they go for the first? David Sumner making the tackle for Pitts. And he is short by about a half yard. The Rainbows are not going to go to the field goal. They're going to try for the first down. Fourth down and a yard. Halo has seven carries tonight, 78 yards. Travis Sims, eight carries, 58 yards. That's seven yards a carry. Big play here for the Rainbows. Fourth and one. Ball is kept by Carter. Oh, man. Big play by Pittsburgh's defense. Charles Williams, yet another time. Well, we've seen the Rainbows tonight backfire on an onside kick. Fourth and one situation. A lot of second guessing going on right now. on number 53 to the left of your screen, Charles Williams. He's making a lot of tackles because he's not being blocked. Watch him avoid this block by the tackle. He comes around and brings Michael Carter down. What Hawaii might consider doing is instead of using their tackle to pick up the linebacker, is bringing their slot, front side slot back and low blocking that linebacker. By the time Williams eluded the block of Kelly McGill, the Rainbows go 62 yards in 13 plays. They take seven minutes in one second, and they end up with nothing. Van Pelt back to work. Complete with running room to Dietrich Gels. First down and more all the way out to, to the 46-yard line. Al Ali Ipule there to make the stop for the Rainbows. At that time, Dietrich Gels runs a 10 and out. He just breaks his pattern out because he sees the the cornerback Zach Odom break into his deep zone so he just uh, makes a nice catch and again a nice pass there by Anthony Van Pelt Alex Van Pelt <laughs> so uh, Derek Daryl Green is down for the rainbows and the rain really starts to come down though you know your car is your star player to help keep it performing its best in your weekly running game try high quality Chevron gasolines with the cleansing power of Tecrolene Chevron simply smarter so there will be some second guessing. About fourth and one. Rainbow's moving the ball with the option. On fourth and one, they try it. They end up short. Let's see how Dower Green gets hurt here. You see number 21. Keep an eye on him. Well, you see Zach he swings Odom, around yeah. trying to make the tackle. Then Zach Odom comes down, down on his leg. Fortunately, not a very serious injury for Darrell Green. And definitely good news for Hawaii's defense because Darrell Green coming into the game as a second leading tackler for Hawaii's defense. Seven fifty one left as Pittsburgh with a first down on their own forty seven yard line back to work. Curtis Martin and Lyron Brooks in the I formation. Agent Hart Ellis has come in for Darrell Green. This is Martin. Martin to midfield, falls into rainbow territory to the 49-yard line. Well, NCAA career total offense list now. This is not just passing offense, but total offense. Alex Van Pelt, third all time, 10,673. That's a, that's a tremendous accomplishment. Only Doug Flutie and Ty Detmer ahead of him. Dave Natoli is wide to the right, single coverage. Picked up by Zach Odom, they flip flop the tight end. Second down, pitch comes to the near side, it's Martin. Yet another time, turning the corner at the 50, and goes out of bounds at the 46. Check that, not Martin, but uh, Dietrich Gels on the uh, option to the near side, on the pitch to the near side, Gels. Gels uh, short of the first down, and will bring up third and three. Again, Pittsburgh going to different formations. That time, going to the, the wishbone, 
and getting the, pit, the pitch to gels. Hawaii doing a nice job of stretching out that option play. Third and three, another third down conversion facing Alex Van Pelt. He has feasted on third down conversions in this game. This is Martin. And he has the first down as he gets to the 42-yard line. Victor Santa Cruz uh, from his position at middle linebacker. So Pitt continues to outmuscle the rainbow. And Jim, you can just credit the blocking by the offensive line. All they do is get right in front of everybody and, and sustain their blocks, keep their feet moving. And right there, you got body on body, and Martin comes up with the first down. So Pittsburgh has advanced with the ball to the 42-yard line of Hawaii. Bill Davis, number 49, is flanked to the far side. Cliff Moncrief, number 47, to the near side. Martin and Brooks remain in the eye, and motion goes by Coon. Ball is pitched. This is Martin turning the corner, and they're rolled out of bounds by Brian Addison. Well, that was a nice option, option play. Van Pell finally pitches the ball to Martin, and Martin was in a one-on-one -on -one situation with number 50, Stuart Williams of Hawaii, and just outruns Williams to get six yards. In on the play of six, second down and four for Pittsburgh. 6.15 left to play in the third period. John Skiba from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. In at the tight end along with uh, Rob Coons. Pitch to Martin. Martin is hit in the backfield. Got back perhaps to the line of scrimmage. Aiden Hart, Agent Hart Ellis uh, on the blitz along with Stuart Williams. Well, nice play there by Stuart Williams just knifing in from, and crashing in from his defensive end position to really make a big play. Third down, about five and a half. And again, Van Pelt, this is what he likes so well, and he does so well. Dietrich Gels and Bill Davis are the wide receiver. The motion Martin out of the backfield. Van Pelt over the middle, complete. That's enough for the first down to Rob Coon. Agent Hart Ellis there on the stop. Well, you got Gels lined up on the left side, and everybody's keying on Gels. And all of a sudden, you pop your tight end right where the linebacker should be. Then Coons comes up with a nice catch. Incredibly, Pittsburgh is 10 for 12 in first down, or rather in the third down convergence. 10 well, for 12. A, that is an amazing statistic. Good, good percentage of converting your third downs. It's almost perfect. On first down, Martin fumbles the ball. It comes right back to him. He loses one, two rainbows, gets back to the line of scrimmage. At well, that time, you can see the sweep reverse beginning to develop, but the ball goes out of uh, Martin's hands. Pittsburgh with really nothing to lose in this game, starting to really go to the deep pages of their playbook. And you were right, Joe, that uh, sweep reverse just starting to manifest itself when the fumble occurred. And, that, and you think about it, that's a good play because they're, they're being successful on the, on the sweeps. They're thinking that the backside people will overreact and overrun the play, and then they run the reverse. But that time, the reverse just doesn't develop. And Pelt now 14 of 18 for 174 yards. This is Jermaine Williams, short of the first down. On second down and 11. Brian Addison credited with the stop. You know something, Joe? This is another third down conversion facing Pitt. They are 10 of 12. And Hawaii's got to put this to a stop because psychologically it can really work on you. You know, as a defensive player, you're out there on the field, you're getting tired. And really, the Hawaii defense has been on the field a, a long time tonight. But they've got to stop Pitt at least right now. Big third down play, third down and six. Here's Van Pelt again. Over the middle, it is jostled, caught, and I believe short of the first down. Bill Davis, hit by Robert Blakeney, and he is, I believe, a yard short. That will be fourth and one. Well, and Pitt brings two, two more tight ends into the game, so they're gonna go with three tight ends and definitely try to get the first down. So Pitt playing smash ball now here on fourth down and one. Our eye formation. Ball is given up the middle to Lyron Brooks. 
And he gets to the 20, and that is enough for the first down. Agent Hart Ellis credited with the tackle. Boy, why not? You've got a big back like Lyron Brooks, who weighs over 230 pounds. Why not use him? And then you see, he just follows the block of his offensive line and just pushes the pile. He just pushes the pile forward. Pitt leading 20 to 14 here in the third period. Two minutes and 48 seconds left. Dave Natoli and Cliff and uh, Cliff Moncrief to the far side. Brooks and Martin in that eye formation. Van Pelt looking. Sideline pattern. It is caught by Moncrief. On the 13-yard line. Well, and Alex Van Pelt had to throw that ball across the field to complete that pass. And he just does such a nice job of reading the defensive coverages, and he'll just throw the ball where the receiver needs to be. Second down and three. Ball at the rainbow 13-yard line. And Pittsburgh has engineered this drive almost perfectly. They have oh. controlled the clock. They have mixed passing and running. And now they're on the doorstep. Ball is given up the middle to Curtis Martin, and he is stonewalled. And they force him oh. down. He get Ripley. Ripley out of Honolulu and University High School. Well, I think Ripley's so short that the tall Pittsburgh line is just going to block him. He gets underneath the center. He goes against the double team, sheds off the block, and then comes up and makes a nice tackle. A nice play by Ed Ripley and going against the double team and then making the tackle. Third down and one. But the reason why Pittsburgh's been able to be successful is they've been able to run the ball successfully. Pittsburgh calls a timeout, 2-12 left in the third. There you see the score. Well, another third down conversion faces Pitt. But tonight in Hawaiian, I guess you could say it's Aoli Pilikia. No problem because they are 10 of 13 and third down conversions. This is third and one. They have to go just inside the 10. Coons, the tight end flip-flop, sets up on the right side. From the wishbone, ball is given up the middle, and I don't believe that Lyron Brooks has it. That'll bring up fourth down. The rainbow stiffened. Brian Addison forged his way into the middle on defense along with Ed Ripley. Well, Ed Ripley doing a nice job of stuffing the middle using his short squatty frame to stuff the inside. And as uh, Brooks tries to bounce out, Brian Addison comes in and finally puts on the finishing touch, but credit Ed Ripley up in the middle, doing a nice job again at nose guard. Sean Conley comes in to try yet another field goal. This will be his third effort of the evening, trying to give Pittsburgh a 23 to 14 lead. This is a 28-yarder, and he punches it through. So Pittsburgh able to inchworm a little bit further into the lead, 23-14. For the clothes kids wear, it's Newman's, with Pittsburgh's largest selection for boys and girls, infants through teens, featuring service and selection in a store where shopping is fun. Newman's, Forbes Avenue, Squirrel Hill, and the Galleria, Mount Lebanon. Stride Right, the area's largest selection of children's shoes and widths for any foot and machine washable leather for added value. See Stride Right's large line of guaranteed leather sneakers. Stride Right Shoes, Ross Park Mall, Newman Squirrel Hill, Newman's Galleria, and opening October 1st, Waterworks Mall, Fox Chapel. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! The truth is, everyone's buzzing about Tom Cruise's new movie. It's a macho kind of movie. Uh, you know. <laughs> but is it the one that could finally win him an Oscar? Find out on the next Entertainment Tonight, when Tom Cruise shares a few words about a few good men. We went till there was no more film in the camera. Then meet the man who claims he stole jewels from Liz Taylor and Sophia Loren on Entertainment Tonight. Monday at 7.30 on WTAE-TV. 
Vicki Eddington was a loving mother of three. Her husband was a career lieutenant commander in the Navy. But when Vicki mysteriously disappeared, her husband kept the family and friends out of the backyard. I tried not to suspect him. That's the children's father. Later, they discovered the deadly secret buried behind the house. Then, the transformation of Hollywood's dynamic duo, Roseanne and Tom Arnold on the next Hard Copy. Monday at 7 on WTAE-TV. So Pittsburgh now leads 23 to 14 with one minute and 20 seconds left in the third period. Derek Branch and Matthew Hardy will be deep for Hawaii. I'd like to send our uh, best wishes tonight to a young man recovering from an auto accident. Great Rainbow fan over the years. He's in rehabilitation now and progressing very fine. Kaipo Fernandez. Kaipo. We send our best to you. One twenty left. Conley kicking off at the one yard line. Derek Branch. Branch carrying tacklers with him all the way out to the thirty one. That almost looked like a rugby scrum with that power move up the, up the field. So the Rainbows have yet to get their first yard passing in this game. They trail now 23 to 14. Pittsburgh held the ball on that drive. We said that they were expertly mixing passing and running. They held the ball for six minutes and 49 seconds. First down for Hawaii, and they come out with a tandem triple wide receiver. Jasper just gets back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he loses a yard. Well, Hawaii trying to get something going here by coming up with the triple stack receivers to the left side. Boy, after you see the, after I saw that ball go to Jasper, man, there's some potential. For a lot of other plays to happen. Loss on the play of one yard, so the rainbow's in passing minus one yard. And they line up triple wide to the near side. Same play. Jasper. He passes back to Carter. There's a man. No, Carter's going to run. Carter. Carter 45 to the 49. Beautiful. Get innovative in the last part of the, the last game. I love that play, the double pass play, the triple stack. Ivan Jasper is the the last guy, the third guy, and this is actually a lateral going backwards. And I wonder if this is a lateral. Yes, it is. It's a lateral. That means Carter could he have thrown, thrown the ball down to Derek Branch. And, and Derek wide Branch, open. Oh yes, Derek Branch was standing by himself. Now they come out again in the triple stack to the near side. Eddie K. Aloha in motion back to the middle. First down from midfield for the Rainbows, trailing by 13. Ball is kept by Carter, and he loses two yards. Charles Williams. Charles Williams will be back in a pip uniform next year. He is a junior out of Philadelphia. Well, he's played a wondrous game for well, the Panthers. Out of the triple stack, they, they run the triple option, but there you see number 53, Charles Williams, again, does not get blocked, then comes in and makes the tackle. Third quarter is into the books. When we come back, Pittsburgh holding on to a 23-14 lead. Fourth quarter, 23 for Pitt, 14 for Hawaii. Rainbows will have it second down and 11 from their own 49. Again, the triple stack. There's only two defenders over there. Lateral, Jasper goes long for Branch. Incomplete. Double coverage. Well, I'll tell you what, that play would have worked 
the second time they ran the triple stack. The, the time that Carter went and, and ran the ball. They see Jasper throws into double coverage. Really has no chance to catch this ball. Third down at 11. Well, you talk about deep into the playbook. This may be an addendum. Third down at 11, Marlo Lewis, again, the triple stack. And again, like you said, Jim, they've only got, they only got two defensive backs back there with the triple, defending the triple stack. Carter, pump fakes, throws. It is complete. First down, Jasper. He fumbles the ball. It goes out of bounds. Rainbows convert on third and long, and the fumble helps the rainbow call. Jim, this is the run. The right here, you see Jasper all alone by himself in the flats, nobody there, and the ball just pops out and starts rolling. And actually gets a good gain out of it. Well, they're going to give him and uh, the point where he fumbles at the uh, 37. So it's first down for the Rainbows, and they continue with the triple stack. Variation on this thing. Aloha in motion. Aloha with the pitch. 35. Aloha down to the 32-yard line. Again, Vernon Lewis. Vernon Lewis there to make the uh, tackle for pitch. Vernon Lewis finally brings him down, but Charles Williams, number 53, again there to make the initial hit. And one of the uh, Pittsburgh players down and writhing. That's Jason Chavis out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. 6'2", 223-pound freshman linebacker. And concern for him as the swirling wind and rain again presents itself to this crowd. Well, Jim, you got to credit the offensive coordinator for Hawaii, Paul Johnson, for his creativity. They're running this triple stack in the fourth quarter. They're known as a running team, the option team, but really, if you think about it, that triple stack passing game is, is also an option. You can run a lot of options out of that passing offense. So concern for Jason Chavis. This is the 12th game for Pitt and for Hawaii. When you play in Hawaii, you are uh, granted a 12th game because of the distance and because of the difficulty Hawaii would have in scheduling opponents. Well, let's take a look at how he gets hurt here. Number 53 on the right side of the screen actually comes right down on right on his knee. Number 53, of course, for Hawaii, Kelly McGill comes right down on his knees. So he's having uh, difficulty in coming off the field, and his teammates will come out and help him. Well, that's hard, you know, when you play linebacker, there's so much traffic going on in the middle. You got tackles, tight ends coming down on you. At that time, the tackle for Hawaii, Kelly McGill, comes right down and puts a cut block right on the knee of Jason Chavis. Total offense now, picked 346 yards, the Rainbows 204 yards. Hit him, third down conversions, an incredible 10 of 14, the Rainbows 5 of 10. Second down and five from the 32 for Hawaii. Again, the triple stack. Okay, Aloha, yet another time in motion. Carter throws, complete to Jasper. Jasper doesn't get going at all. Well, Jasper has just not had, he seemed had to, his footing tonight. Yeah, he seemed to have caught that ball on an ice floor. And we're in the tropics, Joe, the tropics. No gain on that play. Well, he, just, he just doesn't get started. <laughs> Sai Hirota is in the game as the wide receiver. They go away from the triple stack on third down and five. Ball is given to Sims in the clear, and he will score. Sims, a 
his second touchdown tonight, his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. And you could almost sense that at one time because the rainbows were wide, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, up the middle, Sims able to break it for a 32-yard touchdown run. Elam trying to shorten it up to 23-21. Come back in the fourth quarter. Hi, I'm Joe DiNardo. For our latest school visit, we took more news this morning. During that last offensive series for Hawaii, they were attacking the perimeter, the perimeter, the perimeter. Finally, they give the ball up the middle, and they see Travis Sims just cuts back and goes into the end zone. Untouched. Jay Jones, day four pick. Picking off will be Jason Elam. 23 for pick 21 for the Rainbow. With 13.43 left in the game. It's a short kick. Taken by one of the up men at the 20, 25. Chad Dukes carries it out uh, to about the 28-yard line. Jason Elam has now passed Derek Schmidt for third place on the all-time scoring list. 394 points. That's in the NCAA. Joe Shaw credited with the tackle on special teams for the Bows. Now it comes down to a matter of pride for both teams because this score all of a sudden is shortened up. 23-21. Davis and Jones are to the near side. Martin and Brooks are in the I formation behind quarterback Alex Van Kelp. First and 10 from the 27. Van Kelp chased out of the pocket. Throws. It is incomplete. Intended for Bill Davis. Second and 10 from the 27. That time, decent coverage there by Hawaii's secondary and good pass rush by Hawaii's defensive front. Tongue Hawaii and almost getting the sack was Famui. Some post-whistle negotiating going on between the players, verbally. Crowd getting into it. Toley to the near side. Martin. Martin to the 30. Martin hit down at the 34, short of the first down. Martin had to do some elusive running and some ad living getting out of the backfield, but he did so. Walter right. Santiago finally credited with the tackle. Well, he's very elusive right here. He makes Tase Famui miss. We had a real clear shot on him, and then Eludes Maatana Vasa, then cuts in and makes Brian Addison miss, and finally was brought down by Walter Santiago. Another third down facing Pitt. Third and three. Martin, he's short. They hit him at the 35. Brian Addison and Walter Santiago. Oh, great defensive series by Hawaii's defense. Walter Santiago does a nice job of avoiding blocks. Comes in, makes the initial hit. Then Brian Addison finally puts on the final touch. Good tackle. Leon Theodoro into punt. A spiral branch. 56-yard touchdown return earlier in this game. Branch spun down at the 25. And the Rainbows will begin there. Boy, Big defensive series by Hawaii. Coming up with the big hit was Brian Addison and Walter Santiago. Not allowing Pittsburgh's uh, running back to get past the first down marker. Theodoro, 44-yard punt, four-yard return by Branch. First down for the Bows at the 25. We have seen variations on variations tonight on the part of both teams. As we come down to 12 minutes and 11 seconds left in the final game of the year. You see the defensive coordinator, Chris Meehan, trying to get his defense fired up for this fourth quarter. 
since now. Eight carries, 91 yards. He has eight 100-yard games. First down from the 25. Carter to throw. Looks. Sideline pattern for Jasper. He hangs up. Or is he out of bounds? They say he made the catch. I don't know. I don't know. It depends where his feet were. And it was very close to being out of bounds that time. We will have to take a look. Well, remember, Jim, all you need is one foot. And I think Jasper gets his one foot in. Right there. Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. So good catch, nice play. And a I, good call. Yeah. Again, they're right, they're running a lot of options out of that triple stack and, and confusing the secondary of Pittsburgh. And the triple stack is back to the near side. With French, Kealoha, and Jasper. First down for the windows at the 45. Kealoha. Back in motion. Quick pass almost picked off. Almost picked off. So you see there's a lot of options that Carter and the offense can run out of that triple stack. And it's definitely confusing uh, Pittsburgh secondary. You see all the hands there going up in front. Just barely getting the ball to the number 55, Sean Avenant's hands. David Sumner trying to get into a position to intercept that ball. Second down and 10. Bengals trail 23-21. They have the ball at their own 45-yard line. Again, the triple stack. the middle Kaloha takes a rip and he cannot hold on that will bring up third and ten Alexius Perkins really unloaded on Kaloha just inside pit territory now, I'm not sure if Case Clark number 43 actually gets a hand right there on, on the ball no nope, Kaloha just misses the ball and then takes a big lick boy he paid for that and boy there's a lot of well, that, Hawaii can really hurt Pittsburgh if they really get all the options down from this triple stack. Third down and ten, a big play for the Rainbows. Carter now three of nine for 32 yards. Again, Kaloha in motion. Carter pump fakes, pump fakes, now throws. Complete to Jasper. Jasper to the 45. He may have the first down. I think that depends on the mark. Depends on the mark. Gary Parker there to make the stop for Pitt. That's a first down. Again, Carter wasn't sure. Carter was looking deep, and Jasper, who went short, was just waving Carter down. Throw the ball, throw the ball. And finally, Carter throws the ball, and good decision. Jasper takes the ball up here to get a first down. 11.41 left to play in the game. Aroto is wide to the right. Sims is the single setback. First down, bonus pitch back, Jasper. He's at the 40. Jasper at the 35, the 30, the 25, the 22. And Jim, you can credit the plays before that last play, the triple stack, and really just freezing Pittsburgh defense. Because now they go, Hawaii goes into regular offense in the trips formation. They go with the third option, and Jasper's just wide open. And does some nice, nifty running, too. 22-yard gain. The ball is now on the pit 23-yard line. It is first and 10 for the Rainbows. They trail in this game 23-21. Double wide receiver to the left. Sims remains at running back. Carter trying to work some magic here. The Rainbows may have moved, and that would be Kelly McGill. I think Kelly McGill, again, getting a premature start. Offense, still first down. So that'll be first and 15 now for the Rainbow. Let's take a look at it right here. On the top of your screen, they see McGill moving. We can't do that. So the Rainbow's penalized now back to the 28. Again, the triple stack presents itself. Aloha in motion. Carter looking. Throws. Incomplete. It was intended for John Veneri. Veneri goes palms upward after the ball sails by him. There was miscommunications that time. Yeah. When you run out of the triple stack, it just comes down to Carter's decision and, and he reads the defensive secondary. And really, this triple stack puts the secondary in a, a very difficult situation because no matter what they do, somebody's always open. Ball at the 28. Second down and 15 for the Rainbows. Ball at the 28-yard line, 10.45 left. 
Harding now into the game wide to the right. Triple stack to the left. Aloha coming back into motion in your screen. Hunter throws for Harding. Has it. Let's see. Touchdown. Oh, beautiful. Awesome play. So many options out of this triple stack. Instead of going to the triple stack side, this time they go backside to the fastest guy on the team. And Matthew Hardy comes down with a beautiful catch. Redbots have the lead for the first time in the game. Elam is in to try the extra point. Bedlam here at Aloha Stadium. As the Bows have come back against Pitt. 10 39 left here on the fourth. Much football left in this game. It's 27-23. Elam trying to give the Rainbows a five-point lead, and he does. Hawaii 28, Pitt 23. Stay with us. You want it? You want it? Matthew Harding's third touchdown reception of the year, and for Michael Carter, his sixth touchdown pass. Have come back. They lead 28-23, but still 10-39 left to play in this game. Jay Jones deep for Pitt. Elam kicks it off. Jones backs up into the end zone. It's over his head and out of the end zone. That the triple stack has really worked for Hawaii. That, that triple stack just draws a lot of attention from the, the secondary. And on that touchdown play, there you see, instead of running routes, they just sit there. They're saying, hey, you guys are looking the wrong way. The ball's the other side. And it pays off for Hawaii. Nice catch there again, Matthew Hardy. I mean, it's like it's snowing here. They get it up in the trade winds and uh, these... Uh, Pieces of confetti stay up for a long time. There you see the scoring drive, 75 yards in seven plays, 28-yard touchdown pass, Carter to Harder. 28-23, Hawaii, first and 10 for fifth from the corner. Ball is given to Martin. Martin bounces and is able to get all the way out to the 26-yard line, gain of six, second down and four. Brian Addison and Walter Santiago there to make the stop for the Rainbows. Addison playing his final game on the Aloha Stadium turf tonight. 16 of these seniors have 10, 19 left to play before this home crowd. We do have one more game, the Holiday Bowl against Illinois. Jim, I have not seen this much confetti on the field in a long time. Bill Davis and Dietrich Gell wide to the left. And Puff gives it to Martin, and he is Stonewall. Well, Tase Fambui will be credit for the tackle, but the guy that makes this happen is, again, number 96, Ma Tanavasa, who just takes on, takes the center backwards, runs into the fullback, and what's the hit there by Big 99, Tase Fambui. So Tanobasa and Fomoy double team that time. Third down again for Pittsburgh. They have faced third down tonight, time after time. And they've been successful for the most of the time. See if they're successful here. Van up with time. Throws. It is caught. Caught beautifully by, by uh, Martin to the 45 and out of bounds at the 47. And then a late hit by the Rainbows. That could be Addison. And we may have an incident here. Addison's got to get out of there. Look out, here come the rainbows across the field, and this all of a sudden is getting ugly. I mean ugly. Well, there's a lot of punches being thrown. Coach is trying to separate the players, and it continues. I mean, it's got a life of its own right now. It was a late hit, no doubt about that. The whole of the police comes in to stop the fight. Boy, I, I 
tell you, after all that action, Bob Wagner's still holding on to his vanilla, <laughs> vanilla folder. He's going to take he notes. He's going to take notes on the fight, I think. Well, that guy, Coach Wagner, got right in the middle of all that. And look at that. He, he did take notes on that. But there he's, you know, he's scoring Brian Addison. Because that's where it really started. Brian Addison should not have pushed Martin out of, when he was out of bounds. I mean, we're going to take a look at it. And Brian Addison just does not need to do this. He's already out of bounds, and he pushed that extra push. And, of course, the rest of the Pittsburgh Panthers comes to Martin's rescue. Well, that was the catalyst to it all. They're going to sort things out. We may have objections. This could take a while. Jack. And we have offsetting dead ball fouls after the dead ball foul is set. No mark off. First down. But offsetting dead ball fouls. That's a diplomatic way to say that we don't have a rule adequate enough to really uh, address the situation. So they don't penalize Addison? No, no, Addison is penalized, okay, but see. after that, it's offset. I see. They have the ball at the 38-yard line following uh, the assessment of the penalty. Full house backfield, they'll shift out of this. Gels comes over to the near side, picked up by Demetrius Henderson. That pump fakes the gel, throws over the middle, it is complete. The number 49, Bill Davis. Boy, you just got to credit Van Pelt for just having so much poise and so much patience in the pocket. And he's just, he looks for his primary receiver, he's not open, and he goes right to his secondary receiver. First down for Pittsburgh now at the 23-yard line. Boy, that was ugly. I hate to see that. that was... No room for that in football. No, not really. Not at all. Now from the rainbow 23, Van Pelt looking. Sideline pattern, it is complete. Making the catch on the knees at the 12 yard line is Dietrich Gell. Boy, that, that pattern has really hurt Hawaii because there's, there's a guy, there's a cornerback that's in his zone, and then you got a deep, a safety that get deep, he has deep. And what receiver does, he took drowsy, he just cuts right up in the middle of them, just makes a nice catch. Pittsburgh on the doorstep, they trail 28 to 23. Ball is at the 11-yard line. Single setback is Curtis Martin. He's had a night, well over 100 yards. Martin again at the line of scrimmage. And he's ankle tackled right there. Gain on the play, if any, of only a yard to the 10. Well, Junior Tangawai saw that play develop he comes from the backside defensive tackle position and chases down the, the play. No gain on the play. It will be second down. The ball at the 11 as uh, Pittsburgh can get a first down just outside the one. Gels is flanked to the left. Davis on a wing to the right. Van Pelt throws. It is complete. I mean, out of the backfield again, Curtis Martin to the five-yard line. And that will bring up, you guessed it, third down. Well, Jim, you got to credit the offensive line of Pittsburgh giving Ben Pelt just enough time to throw the ball. I mean, Hawaii has had, Hawaii's defensive front has had to work to get to Ben Pelt tonight. Third down play. 20 for 27, 242 yards. And a whistle blows. Van Pelt pulling away from center when the whistle blew. On the field. Five yard penalty against Pitt. Moves the ball back to the 11 yard line. So we were talking about Van Pelt, this being his last game and wanting to end his career with a good game. 
I mean, and, and he said that he could throw the ball maybe more than 30 times, and I think he's on his way to throwing the ball maybe 40 times tonight. Pittsburgh, 11 for 16, and third down conversion. Split back behind Van Pelt, was able to load the left side. Askew in motion to the right side. Van Pelt takes the pitch, looks for Askew. This that comes through again for Hawaii's defense. A naked bootleg, fake the sweep. Ma Talabasa keeps his responsibility contained and comes up with a big, big set. Seventh sack of the year for Talabasa. Conley in to try the field goal. 38-yarder, straight on. High snap, the oh. game is blocked. Rainbows have it, Stuart Williams. Harding blocked that field goal and the official is injured. We have an official down. We have several flags on the field. And that's the referee, Guy Gibbs. Boy. Harding came in. It was a high snap from center. By the time Ryan got the ball down, Harding came in to block it. 6.15 left to play in the game. A concern now for the referee, Guy Gibbs. Well, we do have penalty flags down. Boy, what a high-energy, high-emotional game. I mean, Martin Avassa with a big sack, followed by this block kick by number 23, Matthew Harding. Beautiful, beautiful execution of blocking the kick. And finally, Stuart Williams picks up the ball. And somewhere in there, the referee gets hurt. It's run over. But Guy Gibbs is back. With a dead ball foul, personal foul, on the defense, not on the ball. That Eight hurts. Salsen injury. Yep, that hurts Pittsburgh. You see Salsen Seri, uh, the interim coach at Pittsburgh, that was like a shot. As if they already needed that penalty. I think 14. You see how. That's John Ryan, who was the holder. Yeah. Number 14, John Ryan, may have run over the official. Try to get that uh, replay for you as soon as we can. First down for the Rainbows on the 47 yard line of Pitt. 6.15 left to play in the game. Again, the triple step. Gives the ball up the middle uh, to Travis Sims. Now on this replay, uh, where the official gets hurt, you really don't see the incident, you just see the aftermath, and it will come from the left side. You see the official go down, and there is uh, Ryan. Ryan trying to make the play, and the uh, referee got in the way. And we have a penalty flag apparently against uh, the Rainbows right here. I think it's a holding flag definitely thrown into the area where most of the holding on the offense, still first down. It'll be first and 20 for the Rainbows now at their own 45. That was an eight-yard penalty, Joe. <laughs> huh? It's only an eight-yard penalty. Okay, Aloha again in motion. Carter looking, pump fakes. Trouble. Still on his feet. He's at the 50, the 45, and Carter wrapped up at the 43. Very close to going down on the backfield, but he kept his footing. Hayes Clark and Sean Abenay there to double team him. Well, he had branched wide open, but doesn't get enough time here to throw the ball. But him nearly falling down, the knee does not touch. It's his shin that was down, but not his knee. Kept his balance and kept on going and gets a five-yard gain out of him. How can you touch your shin without your knee, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's okay, let's say he did not touch the top of his knee or his kneecap on the ground, but it was the bottom of his shin or the higher part of your ankle that touched the ground. Second and six. Quick catch to Sims. Gets a block at the 40. Sims at the 30. Sims at the 20. And down he goes at the 19. Perkins 
Titans made the stop 23 yard game. Well, Hawaii really uses Sims for the pitch man, but they do run the two way option. And they run successfully here for Hawaii. They go, they run a twirl with the front side backer, the front stop back, John Vaneri. He puts on a nice block. That frees up Sims down the sidelines, and he gets a good first down for Hawaii. Four minutes, 55 seconds left. And Sims, for the ninth time this year, over 100 yards in rushing. First down, ball given to Sims up the middle, inside the 15. The Rainbow's really ripping holes now in what was before this a very tough, very hard, very agile pick defense. Well, I think the triple stack, the strategy of Hawaii of using the triple stack has really stunned Pittsburgh's defense. It really taking the shell out of, I'm mean, taking the win out of their cells because uh, they don't know how to react now to Hawaii's offense. I don't believe Pittsburgh uh, tonight has adjusted to it well at all. Second down and five from the 15. Ball again is given to Sims, and again he lights, this time all the way to the 10. That'll bring up third down, less than a yard for the first down. And the clock ticking. Ticking toward what could be, what could be the 10th victory of the season for the first time in Division I history for the University of Hawaii. A tremendous accomplishment for this team that just seems to find a way. Again, undersized. But leading here, and the ball, third and one, just outside the 10. Quarterback sneak. Carter, first down. Well, a good decision in going with the quarterback sneak, just finding the open area and going to it. It's a lead block by Mosa and his two guards, Doug Violetti and Peter Polly. Right up the middle, he finds that open area. Just enough for the first down. Clock still ticking, three minutes, 33 seconds left. Sims remains the single setback, triple stack. Veneri in motion. Quarterback draw, five to the two. Michael Carter his own number that time, Hayes Clark. The linebacker made the tackle for Pitt. Boy, that's a, I tell you, this triple stack is really, really, really worked for Hawaii. And, and they can run their, they can still run their regular offense out of it. And that time, we saw another wrinkle from the triple stack, and that was a quarterback draw. Rainbow's now second down, goal to go. Ball is given to Sims, backs toward the goal line, and does not get in. That'll bring a third down, goal to go. As the uh, pit defensive line and linebackers able to hold him out, Gerald Simpson and Mike Halepin. That ball just inside the one-yard line. Well, Pittsburgh comes alive here on the goal line. Good defensive effort by the defensive front, just shedding the blocks. You see 94 has a muscle on him. He fights up for muscles blocked. Comes off and makes the tackle, a short tackle on a very big fullback, Travis Sims. Two minutes and four seconds left in this game. The Rainbows lead 28 to 23. Third down, goal to go, and timeout has been called by Michael Carter. Travis Sims has rushed for 100 yards for the ninth time this season. That ties a Western Athletic Conference record for 100 yard rushing games in a season. So, Joe, the Rainbows all of a sudden change their offense in the second half. They go to something that we have not seen this year. They go to the triple stack offense. And Pittsburgh has trouble adjusting to it. In fact, I don't think they really adjusted to it. The Rainbows were able then to broaden the field, to open it up, to spread it out, and they became effective. Well, Jim, you, you said about Hawaii that they're undersized, and they've been undersized uh, all year long, matched up with uh, opposing teams. And I think what, what the triple stack brought was uh, it just made the defensive players of Pittsburgh, uh, they were forced to just play the pass. And, you know, they were leaning forward and taking advantage of their size and their strength. And the triple stack has just worked well for Hawaii's uh, offense. 
Pittsburgh dominated in the first half. Pittsburgh uh, led 23 to 13. But since that time, the Rainbows have been able to come back and to take the lead, 28-23. Third down, less than a yard to go for the touchdown at one minute and 59 seconds left. So this really is an historic game for a program that really is on the elbow of the nation. I mean, out of the mainstream, so to speak, and try to make a name for itself. So the Rainbow's huddling. Travis Sims remains a single setback. Third and goal to go. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown! And the players raising both hands. That means ten. Ten victories in the season. Remember, all that needs to happen is the ball needs to cross the plane of the goal line. There you see Carter stretching the ball past and right over the goal line. One minute and 56 seconds left. Bob Wagner and Michael Carter, along with Rodney Glover. He is the uh, third strength quarterback. There you see Mike Seawack, who uh, signals in the place for the Rainbows. Uh, but the Rainbows coming from behind tonight. And Michael Carter going over uh, for the touchdown. I, I think right now they're trying to make a decision whether to go for two points. And I think they will. That's Carter's 11th rushing touchdown of the season. So the Rainbows now lead 34 to 23 over a very game pit team that has seemed to wilt a bit here in the fourth quarter when the Rainbows changed to that triple stack offense and Pitt could not adjust to it. But they have played a, a magnificent game when you consider all of the troubles that they have gone through this season. And Sal Sinceri, uh, the interim coach, and the effort that he has made with his staff. They don't know how long they're going to have jobs. Rainbows will go for two. Carter pitches back. Sims, two points. 36, 23, but wait a minute, a penalty flag has been thrown. And that could be offside against Pitt. It is, that'll be declined. 36, 23, the Rainbows lead one, 56 left the play. Kathy, is there anything wrong? You haven't been your usual ebullient self lately. Well, it is football season, Rage, and like millions of other... Street. Rainbow's leading here, 36 to 23, over Pitt and uh, the Panthers with 156 left to answer back. They've got to answer back in a hurry. Because of uh, the penalty, and apparently it's a big one, personal foul, the Rainbows will kick off from the hit 45-yard line. Last time they did that, the Rainbows, uh, or the last time the Rainbows had the advantage because of a penalty, they tried an onside kick, and it was returned very smartly by uh, Curtis Martin. So Jason Elam, who tonight will not get the two field goals that he needs to set the all-time record off and he drills it out of the end zone. And Tim, you know, I've been very impressed with, with Van Pell and his poise in the pocket and his leadership in throwing, throwing the ball and leading his team. But boy, that guy's a tough guy too. You see in this play that, he, that goes to Martin that leads to the fight, you see that he just doesn't watch and he's not a spectator and he's going to get a piece of the action. And, uh, and that just shows what kind of personality he has. Well, not too much action. Well, he's the leader. But he's he the went, leader. He went to the he official. Goes, uh, he went to the official. He's a diplomatic guy. Yes. First down for Pitt. 156 left. First and 10 from the 20. Ask you to the near side. And felt the throw. 
Does so long over the middle. It is complete to Gels. And Gels is triple teamed at uh, the Panther 44 yard line. A Van Pelt can bring them back in a hurry. Henderson, Addison, and Blakeney on the tackle 24 yard game. And that's why Hawaii cannot sit back and watch this game go by. They've got to play hard. They've got to play to the last second ticks off of that scoreboard. First and 10 from the 44, Van Pelt again. Throws, it is complete to the tight end, Coons, but he falls down at the 49. And the clock will run, 133, 132 as you see it there. Well, Pittsburgh has two, first, two timeouts to Hawaii's one. Second and five. Short drop. Quick pattern to Coons. He gets out of bounds. And Rainbow Territory at the 47. That stops the clock with one minute and 12 seconds left. Rainbows tonight. Brian Addison, Derek Branch, Jason Elam, Eddie K. Aloha, Harry Lyons, Ivan Mauga, Ali Myrick, Benjamin Prome, Lewis Randall, Walter Santiago, Eric Center, Travis Sims, Junior Tangawai, Maratanabasa, Andrew Toyina, and Doug Violetti are all playing their final game here at Aloha Stadium. Third down and one with 112 left. Van Pelt. Throws long. It is complete to Askew, and he is hit by Addison at the 25. That will stop the clock with 105 left. Back in a hurry. You bet. 22-yard gain on that pass from Van Pelt. Alex Van Pelt has been, again, his marvelous self. Hawaii obviously going with the nickel defense with only four rushes. Van Pelt going for the touchdown to Gels. He holds on at the five as he's hit by Blakeney. That will stop the clock with less than a minute to go. Boy, that ball is hanging off there. Huh? I think Blakeney could have made an effort to try to get an interception or back that ball away instead of sending back. Rainbow's very soft on that defensive secondary. It is first down and goal to go for Pitt at the line. Looking into the end zone. Throws. It is complete to Martin, but he doesn't get in the end zone. He may have fumbled the ball. Let's see. Rainbow's have it. Oh, God. Too bad for Pittsburgh. Well, you work hard to take the ball downfield, and you, don't, you just don't get the ball into the end zone. But what a big play for Hawaii's defense. Demetrius Henderson credited with the recovery. There's uh, Coach Sinceri on the near side. And you see, Van Cowell again showing his leadership. And, Comforting his teammates. Van Pelt, 26 of 31, 329 yards tonight. So Coach Sinceri can only perceive his fate here and the fate of this coaching staff. The Rainbows, in the meantime, will celebrate victory number 10, a magnificent season 10 and 2, and a date in the Holiday Bowl in San Diego against Illinois. And Jim. Hawaii wins this game, they will be undefeated for the first time here in the Law Stadium ever. For the season. For the season. At home. Carter just falls on the ball, but will uh, start the clock running. 29 seconds, and timeout has been called. And we shall return to Aloha Stadium as the Rainbows close in on their 10th win of the season. Today's Boys and Girls Club is a lot. Well, oh, Bob Wagner, this has been a drain on uh, Coach Wagner tonight as he takes a drink of cooling water. 22 points in the fourth quarter have turned this game around. I'm holding on to his very popular Manila photo. He'll take notes. 29 seconds left between uh, the Rainbows and their 10th victory. And we have a penalty flag uh, thrown as Michael Carter attempts to run out.
the clock here. Pitt has one more timeout remaining. Dead ball, ball start, offense. Rainbow's called for the false start. That will move the ball back to the 15-yard line. Going to put some seconds back on the clock. Two seconds, 29 seconds left. So this Rainbow team that was picked by many to finish in the bottom half of the conference. In fact, they were picked eighth. They will represent the conference as the champions, and they will come away with an undefeated at home record this year, and also with their first 10 win season ever. They will finish at 10 and 2. And the clock starting to tick off the final moments for the seniors on both teams. We congratulate the Pittsburgh seniors. They played a valiant game tonight. I'm in a long way to play it with adversity. But the Rainbows are 10 and 2. one time it doesn't matter who your neighbor is well the players of the game tonight for Pitt quarterback Alex Van Pelt 36 or rather uh, 26 of 31 for 320 yards and for the Rainbows of Hawaii Tanovasa 12 tackles seven solo tackles five assisted tackles and one sack. GTE Hawaiian Tell pleased to make a contribution for scholarship to the University of Hawaii. GTE Hawaiian Tell beyond the call. For the first time, the Rainbows have been able to win their 10th game of the season against uh, two losses. They're on their way to the Holiday Bowl. We say aloha to the seniors, undefeated at home. A great come from behind victory tonight. For our Channel 13 crew, they're the best ever, the best anywhere. For the work that they have done throughout the season, I salute them. And it's uh, been great working with you, Joe, this year. And the Rainbows can uh, start to celebrate now with their fans. The senior walk about to take place. 10 and 2 for 1992. Until next time, this is Jim Lee wishing you the best from Aloha Stadium for the Rainbows. Come from behind to defeat Pitt. 36 to 23. <laughs> Enterprise Network presents College Football 85. Today, from Pitt Stadium, the Boston College Eagles take on the Panthers of the University of Pittsburgh. Hi, everybody. Temperature 77 degrees here at game time, and it'll be a little warmer than that before the afternoon is over. The humidity at about 60% very hazy sky so the weather may be a factor as Boston College enters the playing field Jack Bicknell their head coach in his fifth year there with a record at BC of 33 16 and one and he has taken them as you see to three consecutive bowl games yesterday we talked to coach Bicknell about the things he considers key for his team today I think one of the keys in our defensive football team is Billy Romanowski and Ted Gaffney, our linebackers, because they've got a very talented tailback in Gladman, and he cuts back, and we can't overrun with those good linebackers. So it's uh, going to be a real effort on their part to, to slow down the pit offense. And those linebackers are good. Bill Romanowski had 20 tackles last week against Maryland. Well, he leads the team in tackles, and uh, Jack McNeil is, very, is right. He's got to be very disciplined in that linebacker position. Gladman's going to cut back him time and time again. He's got to stay at home. Troy Strapper, he gains 100 yards each week. He catches the ball out of the back. He stretches the defense out so much that puts a lot of pressure on the secondary. And now the crowd beginning to buzz a little bit as the Pitt Panthers are starting to mass in the tunnel coming out of their locker room. And as you see, some of the sororities and fraternities have made a little tunnel for them to enter the playing field through. That's quite a group down there. <laughs> <laughs> Rather diverse. <laughs> More like a lynch mob. <laughs> well, Pitt played very well last week against Ohio State, as I'm sure many of you are aware. A game 
they really could have and many feel here in Pittsburgh should have won and here they come. And leading them out is Foge Fazio. Foge in his fourth year trying to carry on the great tradition here at Pitt. His record so far 21 14 and 2. And Serafino Foge Fazio who played here at Pittsburgh talked to us yesterday about what he considers to be key for his team. Yeah. Brown, Stepnowski, Pettyjohn, Durundo, and Dixon, who are big and strong up front. Especially Dixon. Jack Ham calls him the Cathedral of Learning. Here comes Gladman for his first carry. He gets a block on the corner and is run out of bounds near the 45 by Carl Pelagata, the safety man, 